Radio. And tonight we will continue our study, our weekly study of this beautiful book, Among Brothers of Other Lands. And we are in chapter 20. So now that we are doing it weekly, the book is going to end much faster. Look. We are chapter 20, and I believe there is 40, blah, 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 hold on one second, 42 chapters. So soon we will be ending this uh, beautiful book and uh, starting another one. So I just want to, to welcome all of you that will be coming live in a few minutes. I'm testing this new app called Be Live, and it's really good because it helps us to show slides, help us to improve participation of uh, our other friends, our friends that will be uh, making comments. And it also um, uh, records on Facebook Live. So it's, it's the full package. So right now, I just would like to ask you if you have, I hope you have, your water bottle. As I always say, we in Spiritism, we believe the spirits, the enlightened spirits, they can, you know, put the good vibrations, the good medication in, uh, in the water, and we really need it. So I am inviting you all to have your medication, especially now, because we need so much to be sane mentally, physically, spiritually. We need to keep our minds in a very positive state. You know, in this time of coronavirus, it's, it's very stressful. Everybody is going stressed in different uh, ways because of different reasons. So more than ever, we need our spiritual medication, and we need to be able to relax. And I invite you all now for a very quick prayer before we start, okay? Dear God, our Master Jesus, our guardian angels, thank you so much for your presence, for your guidance, for your blessings. Please come, closer to us, inspiring us, helping us to be able to fully connect with our study, always vibrating positive and loving ideas so we can fully comprehend the message of tonight. Please stay with us now and ever. Thank you so much. So be it. Very good, my friends. Happy to be here and the uh, uh, I can see some friends here. Oh, this new future is really cool. Hello, Sol, Claudia, Carla. Nice to have you here. I hope you are prepared for strong emotions <laughs> because being with me, <laughs> medium of uh, effects, all kinds of things happen. So hopefully everything will be good and we will be able to have our normal study just to start i know you guys are fully aware of it but i would like to share few few screens with you uh just to let you know this book among the brothers of other lands the chapter of today is chapter 20 and the title is work always by the spirit of emmanuel us that we have been studying this book for 20 chapters 19 chapters we already know emmanuel very very well uh, i even have a private group a whatsapp group where we share messages and where one of my friends melissa she actually is sending us audios of uh, some of the emmanuel's book collection so this one i'm sharing with you now i hope i'm sharing please let me know if i'm sharing this is one of uh, emmanuel's uh, books about his own life so 2000 years ago and as you can see here in the bottom 
is uh, 50 years. Let me show in a different way. Oops. Like this. So I think you can see it better. 50 years later. And then uh, continue with hell Christ. But it's not uh, hell Christ. But it's not uh, showing here. But anyway, it's uh, good for you if you can purchase or if you already have those books. They are amazing books that tell the life story of this amazing spirit, Emmanuel. And uh, this that I want to share too. Let me see if I can do. This book here is the book that we are actually uh, studying. So I think you can see in the screen. So this is Among Brothers of Other Lands. If you live far away from any spirit center, now you don't have an excuse for not purchasing the book because you can actually buy the book in Amazon. So it's really easy, fast, and you can have the book one, two, three in your hands. So very good. Let me just uh, remove this and I'm back here. So as I always do it, I will read the text, then I will comment. And the, please, you are more than welcome to make comments or, or you ask questions so we can have a little bit of a participation, okay? Work always, Emmanuel. Idleness is not the only stagnation of a progress. It is necessary to auscultate its profound disadvantages. Thus, it will not be necessary to appeal to the elements of poetry and rhetoric. It will be enough to consult the register of a life. Certainly, life demands the efforts of impression, but above all efforts of action. Each spirit is called upon to learn in order to express itself, and there is no expression without work. Everything that is created in nature is waiting its server. There is nothing reserved to laziness, but a spectacle of a misery which denounces it as the compound converted in home by the lazy spirit. Discoveries and inventions that greet humankind were born through spirits who decided to work questioning the forces of the universe. Genius is applied diligence. Throughout millennia, millions of human beings cross the pathway of earth with difficulty, benefiting the sweat of beasts. It took the intervention of few operating spirits who reincarnated on the planet to solve the problems of transportation. And in less than a century, hum humanity of today moves from pole to pole in a speed superior to the sound, if so, if it desires so. Let us not ignore the importance of a cre creative activity in the existence. In the inferior lines of evolution, work appears as an, as an effect of domestication of a will. The primitive man, stoked by hunger, is compelled to leave the hut and act to eat. When we first, when the first signs of governance shine, the aggressive peoples enslave one another, alternating themselves in the position of sirs and vassals. In the dilated line of reincarnations, in order to awake for the value of a work. As education expands, work conquers new trophies of nobleness. 
until it reaches the brightness with the Spirit's doctrine, which belongs to itself as the greatest privilege of a heart and intelligence. Let us not elude ourselves. The Spirit's principles open to us elevated plans of joy and liberation. Duty is serving happiness of being useful. This sentence is very important. Duty is serving happiness of being useful. Definition of paths and objectives. Let us leave behind the dead ignominious of the uselessness reincarnations in which oftentimes we spruced up ourselves with golden indolence. Every now and then, let us visit a museum for a few minutes and we will realize the transi transience of the external glories, learning that there is only one work to happiness, the happiness of working. The last sentence is great. Only one work to happiness, the happiness of working. Very interesting. And, uh, you know, work always, work always. And uh, we think work always, you know, we look forward the time that we don't need to work, that we can be just like, la, ah, la, 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 la. But I have to tell you that a lot of people that do not work anymore, they get very bored, very bored. It's like a, every day is the same thing. They don't have some place to go. They don't have an obligation. They don't have to, to do certain things. So every day doing the same thing, you wake up, you sleep, you eat. This is not productive, but uh, yes, most of those people, they are elderly. So, you know, their physical bodies are already tired. So they deserve this vacation. But we also know that depend uh, where you live, you will not have vacation because your kids will start asking lots of favors and you will have to do lots of things. And sometimes they ask, the elderly parents to take care of the kids, the grandkids. And uh, as you know, grandkids are a lot of work, a lot of work because they have a lot of energy. And usually elderly parents, they don't have that energy. So it's difficult. And especially now, we today is March 26, 2020. We are in the middle of the coronavirus with lots of people telling lots of things about coronavirus that we really, we, we get sometimes so many things, so, so much of information that we get like, oof. but one thing they all say it's true, it affects much more the older people and the younger people, they basically do not have it, a super ultra small percentage has it as a, some kind of a cold, but yes, the little kids, they don't get very affected, but they will transmit it to the older people. And uh, if the parents continue leaving the kids with their grandparents, yes, this can be very dangerous for their health. So uh, hopefully you are now able to be home with your kids and that uh, you can protect your loving mothers and fathers that are older and they really need to be, to try at least to be away from this uh, virus until a vaccine is discovered. So let's see. So let's analyze it here. Uh, so let me see uh, who, who said anything here. So Saul said amazing book, so happy to be connected with you all. And uh, Claudia said, um, that's the way we learn. We evolve by working. We grow exactly, exactly. It's so good to, so good to study. It's so important to study. 
I am trying to understand how to deal with this thing here. <laughs> so I'm trying to see how I use it. I think I did. <laughs> well, anyway, so let's go. What else can we talk? What else can we talk about work always? I remember a passage that the, that the Jesus himself, he says, uh, I am constantly working because my father who art in heaven never stopped working. So just to think about that, you're like, wow. Yeah, and there is, when we analyze it, it's true because we know that the God is constantly creating. You can take this just by our universe, for example. We know the universe is always expanding, and this is scientifically proven. It's not a, a, a religious person that uh, is talking about that. This is science. Nowadays, we are already able to confirm the universe is always expanding, is always new constellations are being created new solar systems are being created on a daily basis so god is always creating and we also know that god never creates something without a purpose so there are purpose for these new creations so new spirits are also being created so it's always the, the work is constant because we are all evolving not just us from Earth, but from all the planets. And as I was uh, talking in the lecture that uh, I gave on Tuesday, the planet Earth left the phase of tests and atonements, and we are regeneration. So the planet Earth is evolving to regeneration. We are regeneration. We are in the regeneration phase, but we don't feel like it because we are, we just left the test and atonement so for a long time we will continue feeling like test and atonements with uh, difficulties with issues with fights and uh, and uh, we hope not really wars we hope that's what we are we have to be praying and uh, also what we are going through right now the coronavirus is also part of the regeneration and everybody's like whoa but why why well i have my own theory but i can say this is because of that i think each one should take their own conclusions and um, if you speak portuguese i would uh, tell you to please listen to what uh, divaldo franco mentioned about but in my opinion this virus that came to our lives right now it came to teach us many things to teach us this uh, social distancing that we are learning now we are being imposed in most of the uh, most of the countries it's helping us to give value to what was really important and as i, I mentioned before we were like until two weeks ago three weeks ago we were going out with our friends big groups to a restaurant everybody connected and then people sit next to each other they sit next to each other and they don't talk they are all on the phone all on the phone and like taking pictures of the food and the me taking pictures of everybody like so I'm not, uh, I'm part of it. The difference is that uh, I love the gatherings and I give value to people. So when I sit with people, I want to talk to them. I want to exchange information and I, I, I want to be there with them. But I have to say a lot of people are really like writing, oh, I am here with a huge group of people having so much fun. And I am there like, Oh, so you're my neighbor. Can you just tell me something about you? And the person, oh, yeah, yeah. One moment, one moment. And then the food arrives, start eating. So this is one thing that the people are going to give value because now you can't. Even if you want to be with someone, you can't. Another thing that's important right now 
people that uh, we love so much and that we can't be together. So before we could be with our parents, we are our loved ones, but we can't. Now we really have to respect this social distancing. And then people that work for us or with us and that you can't. So I have been uh, reading some comments and, and I find them funny, but when you think, and uh, they are not funny, they are real. Uh, today I saw a post that I thought was very funny and it was of a, a maid and the maid is texting the her boss and she's telling her to do to do rice is easy you just have to to put the oil and she's like giving the recipe and then she says oh please don't forget to put the rice inside of it <laughs> so it's like uh, imagine very rich people that uh, never needed to do anything never needed to cook for example now they need to learn now they need to Arregaçar mangas. They actually need to put their hands to work. Another thing that I find very, very important, parents that were so busy, so super busy, that they didn't have time to spend with their kids because they have to work so much and they leave very early, they come back very late, the kids are sleeping they don't spend time with them so now they are actually spending time with them and they are seeing how difficult it could be because kids demand attention depending on the age they demand attention you have to be there with them so hopefully those parents are really participating of this process of a uh, education and very close to, to their kids, not just giving iPads or iPods so they can be in some kind of app the whole day, but the parents are able to give them some attention. I understand there are some parents that are working from home, like me, and uh, it could be very difficult when you have little kids and you don't have someone else to help you to work the kids. Uh, to help to stay with the kids while you work, but you will have to learn some kind of a balance. But sooner or later, we are going to get out of the situation. We are going to be able to come back to our normal lives. And what I hope the most is that we all will bring with us lessons that we learned. We will bring lessons that uh, wow while i was locked in my house i couldn't do this this and this i am so happy that now i can do that it's such a, a blessing to be able to do it so let's uh, let's continue being positive upbeat understanding there is always a reason for everything god is under is controlling everything and that Jesus is the governor of our planet. So he knows very well what's going on. So let's continue praying because we want everybody that we love to be safe. We want the whole planet to be able to be saved, saved many times from our own mistakes because we commit so many mistakes and we don't, we don't realize it. And now is a time for us to really think about, meditate about how, how we were living before. So when we get out of this, we can switch to a much, much better, much, much better lifestyle. So uh, let me see here. How do I do this? I am trying to show. <laughs> I'm still learning with this. Uh, two i would like to show this but i don't think i can how do i do hold on one second guys dun, 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 dun. Uh, it's like this let me see if i can i don't know do you see anything popping up <laughs> i wanted to highlight a comment but you know too difficult to highlight and to, to comment so the first sentence Oof, I already spoke a lot, but the first sentence says, 
Idleness is not only stagnation of progress. So we know that when you are idle, you do not progress. You just stay there, stay there. And, uh, you know, we need, we know that when we come to earth, when we reincarnate, he, we have to progress. We have to make an effort to progress. We never digress. We never digress. We, you never go back. You never become worse than what you are, are already. But we also know there are spirits that are lazy, that they do not progress. They stay there, almost like in the situation of idleness. So this is really a waste of time. Imagine when, it, when you spend a day or a week doing absolutely nothing. And when you wake up from the situation, you feel horrible. You're like, I cannot believe this. I spent a whole day doing nothing. Sometimes it's good for relax, but imagine a week. I spent a whole week that I didn't do anything productive. You feel guilty. Now imagine one reincarnation, 100 years. You spent 100 years in idleness. So we don't want that. We want always to progress. So he, con he talks about this will bring profound disadvantages to the spirit. And he continues, life demands efforts of impression, but above all the efforts of action, you need to act. You need to move, you need to work. Whenever we want to do something, we have to take steps to do it. If you want to find a job and uh, you, you stay in the situation of uh, poor me, oh, poor me, I'm such a good girl, I study so much, I have so much experience, I don't know how I don't find the job, this is crazy. And then you call everybody, oh, my life is miserable. Have you done your resume? Have you updated it? Have you posted in the hundreds of tools we have nowadays? Have you forwarded to your friends that might know someone? No? Oh, so you are in idleness. You are in the situation of poor me, not properly acting. This is what we have to focus. I just gave an example of a work, but it can be anything can be anything. Oh, my dream is to learn how to paint. So have you ever tried? Oh, I tried. It's impossible. Well, if you really tried alone and it's impossible, then try to save some money to register for classes. And let me tell you, nowadays, YouTube has everything. Yes, YouTube is the solution of lots of the problems. Because there are so many different types of tutorials for free that you basically learn it. Of course, it's always wonderful when you are next to a teacher. But we have to, to understand that uh, whenever you want something, whenever you really want something, you can make it happen. Put this in your, in your mind. And then it, he continues. Each spirit is called upon to learn in order to express itself and there is no expression without work that's what i just said we have to learn but we have to work in order to learn if you stay in idleness it's much it's much more difficult to be able to learn and talks about the discoveries and inventions so all these spirits who made discoveries and inventions they were doing their due diligence they were researching they were trying they were having many ideas on how to do this how to do that and that's how when you try and you make a mistake you try again make a mistake you don't quit you go 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 until one moment that you reach to the goal can you imagine right now how many scientists all around our planet are working hard to discover a vaccine to the coronavirus? Yes, a lot. I can just imagine a lot working hours and hours and hours because all of them have this goal of uh, helping our planet. Yes, yes. Probably some of them have the goal to become famous because whoever discovers this will become famous. But uh, 
it will benefit millions of people. So it is a blessing. And whenever the effort connects with the possibility, because we know when the correct moment arrives, the vaccine will be able to be developed. Maybe it was not developed yet because we still need to go through this trial, this atonement, this group atonement. But whenever the moment reach, whenever we learned our lesson, then one or more scientists maybe will discover at the same time. And then we will be blessed with this uh, new vaccine and a new resolution in our lives. And then in the next page, if you have the book 72, Emmanuel says, few operating in spirits who reincarnated on the planet to solve the problem of transportation. So he talks about the spirits that reincarnated many times. They came to earth many times in order to develop the ideas to create modern transportations. So in the past, are you out? Or you had an animal that uh, you could be on the animal bringing things. But then we have the evolution and we had bicycles, tricycles, cars, tanks, submarines, airplanes. So when you think nowadays, it's amazing. You could leave from the United States to Europe in less than, than I think it was less than three hours when the supersonic um, airplanes were working. Uh, forgot the, the, the name of the, the planes that were super fast. So they, we already developed so much in intellectuality, but because of efforts of spirits who came and they really wanted it. So sometimes they reincarnated more than one time to be able to develop it. And then we know you go to the spiritual realm, you learn something because there is already prepared. It's much more developed than here. Then you reincarnate with that idea. But for you to be able to put that idea in practice requires a lot. So this is, a, this is beautiful how he explains here. And then he continues talking about how was this process of evolution. Since the primitive man, talking about the caveman that only left their caves or their shuts when they were hungry. I'm hungry? Okay, my belly tells me I have to go out. So that's when the cavemen start going out in order to be able to hunt. But then it continues the process of evolution. And then there were the tribes, they were like stronger than others. And then they used to impose certain things in other tribes. And that's when the reincarnation process started one time they were the, the vassals, vassalos, the, like uh, the employees or the weak. And another time they are the boss, they are the serfs, they are the, the stronger. So it took centuries reincarnating like this, take exchanging positions. Like uh, many times we say also in one reincarnation, A and B, A killed B. Next reincarnation, they come back again. Then the next reincarnation, B killed A, and they go. They go for a certain time until the time where they learn if they continue in this process of killing or being killed, they are not evolving. They are actually acquiring more negative vibrations. In uh, other philosophies, they say negative karma. But when they finally realize this is not good, then they learn how to forgive. Then they forgive each other and then they accept whatever was the issue. They accept and they don't go against the other. And that's when they finally are able to evolve and not continue in this type of uh, wasted reincarnations. And then he's, he explains here. So this is called the, when the education expands. That's the education, but this is the 
moral education. We know that for us to be able to evolve, we need to evolve morally and intellectually. We need to evolve in both ways. Whenever we are able to evolve in both ways, in both ways together, then we will become a pure spirit. Some reincarnations we evolve morally, other incarnations intellectually, others we evolve a little bit of both, but it's always depending on our free will, our own desire to work. So my friends, we have to work. Even if the work is not the physical labor, but it's also the mental label to work in in to work for giving someone that you can't even understand why it doesn't like you this is also work is work in our moral qualities very important work and just to finalize the last sentence Every now and then, let us visit the museum for a few minutes and we will realize the transience of the external glories. Learning that there is only one work to happiness, the happiness of working. And it is true. Have you remember, I think we all went through this, even if some people went through it very, very shortly, others went to a, a larger period of time. But we all usually go to a time where we are unemployed, where we don't have a, a work, when we don't have a job, or when you don't have a study. Even if you worked very little, but you studied, so you have that obligation, you have to wake up early you have to take transportation to go to your school or to your job then you have responsibilities you have to learn you have to show that you are improving to your boss so these are like things that you're required to do almost mechanically but whenever have a time that you are not allowed to do it or when you don't need to do it then you miss it you miss it because we are usually we are beings that we want to keep occupied we want to keep our minds occupied and uh, and it's always a blessing because when we are able to keep our minds occupied being useful for ourselves or for others we are progressing. We are always progressing. Even if you are doing a job that you think it's a waste of time, I'm never gonna be able to improve for, from that. It's not true, it's an experience. And sooner or later, you might be required to have that type of experience. Maybe that experience will not work for another job, related, but maybe it will work in your lifetime. For example, let me give you a, a quick example. My father used to be a manager in a big bank. And uh, my father was extremely shy, extremely shy. I was born like this, <laughs> talking to everybody. I can just imagine the nurse taking me. I'm like, hey, what's your name? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> But my father, super shy, super shy. But in his position, he didn't need to be outgoing. He only had to do his job. He did his job very well. He was able to talk to the other managers, to tell them to talk, blah, blah, blah. It was very good. But many, many years passed. He left, he changed the cities, changed the jobs, and he became a store owner. So when you work with the public, it is very different. It is very different. Because when you have a business job, you know what you're talking about. You only need to talk about certain things and that's it. But when you're dealing with people, you meet people every day, very different people, and you have to be pleasant and you have to be talkative and you have to engage so 
the store that my parents had was a gift store. So I remember being very young, like 11, and uh, people coming. And the, most of the time, my mother was there. I was there, but I was very young. I was 11. And um, I remember this day, my mother, super talkative, like me, actually more. <laughs> she was not there, and my father was alone. And I remember this person coming and asking, oh, I need your help in order to find a few gifts for my family. My father became white as a ghost because he would have to talk to the lady to ask her questions about who was the family member, trying to understand the profile of the person, to offer her ideas of gifts. And he was so nervous that he went inside. The, it, it was lunchtime, so the person that worked there helping was not there. And he asked me, 11 year old, and he said, Angela, can you please go outside and help a lady to find gifts for her family? Because I don't know how to do it. So I'm like, yeah, sure. But you imagine I was 11 years old. So I went there. And I talked to the person and the, she, she told me, oh, my grandchild, my son, my whatever. And I gave her ideas. I showed her things. And in the end, she bought everything. When she left, I told my father, dad, you have to learn how to talk to people. And he said, I know, I know, I know, but it's very difficult. It's very difficult. I can't even look in their eyes. But why I'm telling you this, you know, Sometimes you need to develop certain characteristics that you think you might never need it. Never need it. Nowadays, my, my parents had that store for over 20 years. And my father, because of the store, became a super talkative person. Today, I was talking to him. They live in a very small city in Brazil nowadays. And I was talking to him and I said, Dad, are you, are you being careful because of the coronavirus? And he's like, no, I'm being very careful. I, I just go to the market and come back and that's it. And my mother said, tell her what you do when you go to the market. So my father thinks he's the mayor. So he's shaking hands of the people. He's talking to everyone. He's exchanging ideas so he actually became like a too talkative in the moment that you need to practice social distancing so he needs to learn this too but my friends the important message of this text is this work always 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 constantly working because we will be constantly progressing and the more we progress the better for ourselves when our incarnation finish when we reincarnate we will be able to face different tasks that we didn't learn so we don't need to repeat certain things we can actually learn different things so this is a blessing for all of us uh you guys are not commenting anything i hope i'm still connected because you never know but i think i'm still connected and uh, Right now, we switch. We go to the gospel according to spiritism. And uh, please do not leave because a lot of people say, oh, no, the gospel is the Bible. I don't need it. And it's not true. We need it. We all need it. The gospel is really like it talks directly to, to our hearts. It's really a blessing to all of us and it helps us so so much so please do not leave can anyone just write anything here just to make sure i am connected i'm always like i never know if i disconnected i'm not looking at my phone but i think i think we are connected anyway so we finished chapter six and we are starting chapter seven of the gospel according to spiritism and the text, the title is Blessed are the poor of spirit. Blessed are the poor of spirit. So this title has been misunderstood for, for a long time. People were like, why Jesus would say that the blessed are the 
poor of uh, poor in spirit like uh, blessed are the ignorance blessed are the ones that uh, don't really know anything don't know what they're doing no it was not that that the jesus was trying to trying to tell us oh i see you're here oh very good thank you so matthew and nora <laughs> you know i have so many problems of disconnections that i i really have to make sure you guys are here and i'm not talking to myself as I was talking <laughs> during the lecture. So when Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, he is talking about, if you are reading, you can go to page, to page 157 that it says, by poor in spirit, Jesus, Jesus does not mean devoid of intelligence, but the humble. He said, the kingdom of heaven is for them and not for the proud. So this is, it's good for us to understand the humble people, the simple people. Yes, yeah, sometimes the people that are ignorant, they ignore something. I'm not saying the stupid people, but the ones that ignore some things. And um, the next paragraph it talks about the different difference of certain types of people. So he says, person of knowledge and intellect. So people that um, they are like the superior people, we can say. They have knowledge, they have intellect. And usually on earth, when you have certain level of knowledge and intellect, you end up having some certain level of power, certain level of prestige in a society. And he, con he continues and he said, um, let, me, let me go through the beginning here. According to the word, usually have such a high opinion on themselves and their superiority that they consider divine things as unworthy of their attention. And the, and this is true. This is tonight. The connection is working. <laughs> Let's be quiet because we never know. Uh, Tuesday I was connected here via cable because when I'm upstairs I'm connected wireless. But here via cable, and I think with 50 minutes of lecture, the whole house disconnected everything. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me one hour to be able to, to have internet back. Craziness, but I, I'm glad it's working. So when we think about the persons of knowledge and intellect, we have to connect with a lot of people that are atheists. Uh, there are many different types of atheists, but are usually the the ones that they use a lot of intellect they have a tendency of rationalizing everything they rationalize they think about everything and if they are really men and women of science many times they're like no 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 if i can't prove if the science was not able to prove until nowadays it's not uh, possible they talk this about um, about spirituality for example the mediumship they believe all the mediums are liars. They do not believe to be possible to connect, to talk to a spirit. And even if, I always say that, even if a spirit could appear right now, and if an atheist, especially the, the third type of atheist, the atheist that likes, enjoys not believing, so he would say, this was my imagination, this was my outer ego, this was, the, they would say all kinds of things and they wouldn't believe. So it's not uh, um, showing them, making them to see certain things doesn't mean they will believe. And, uh, and the Kardec continues in this explanation, he says, this, incline, this inclination to believe themselves to be above anything and everything quite often leads them to deny anything that might be above them. 
even divinity itself, which could humble them. Or if they do consent in believing in divinity, they contest one of the most beautiful attributes, its providential acting regarding matters of this world. And then below he says, if they refuse to believe in the invisible world and extra human power, it's not because it is beyond their ability of understanding, of, of uh, understanding this possibility. But it is because their pride, their pride revolts against the idea of something above which they cannot place themselves and which would make them come down from their pedestal. So in order to believe, oh my God, this hair. <laughs> In or, so many times in order to believe in something extra, in something like, like it says here from the invisible world, they would have to come down from their pedestal, from their pedestal, from their high authority. They would have to humble themselves. And many times they don't want to do that. They do not accept it. And then they bring it to Science. If science didn't prove it, it's because it does not exist. And uh, in the reality, is themselves with their pride thinking they are superior, that they don't want to accept. But we have to say it's not everyone. Please never generalize everything we there are so many exceptions there are so many amazing scientists from forever forever you know you can classify alan kardec as a scientist too and uh, there are so many uh, scientists from the time of kardec that also they were hired they were hired to disprove spiritism. They were hired to prove this was a mystification, this was a lie. And they studied many spirits, like the medium Eusebia Palladino, that was an Italian medium, unbelievable medium. She was a medium of materialization. She, she did lots and lots of phenomena. And uh, they were hired to investigate her and, uh, and other spirits. So these scientists, they were extremely methodical because science requires certain things to be done in proper ways. They have to have steps. Everything has to be cataloged. They have to write. There are lots of things they have to confirm are happening or not happening in order for science to accept. And they did it and uh, reached to a point they couldn't understand how tables were floating in the air and they were walking underneath. They proved the medium was like totally tied, like was like this, like couldn't move. Because yes, forever, from all epochs, all epochs, there were always charlatans, always people taking advantage of others, always people asking for money to tell you things about your future, for example. And many times it, they were lies. But as Kardec, as I hope you were able to see the movie, Kardec, you also saw that Kardec himself did not believe. He himself didn't want to get involved with the turning tables because he believed it was just a lie. But when he finally got involved and he started studying and he started asking intelligent questions, even just by the thought and the table was answering, then he was like, okay, now we have to understand what is happening here because the table has no nerves there is no neuro system how a table can really talk so that's what made the kardec to get involved and deeply study so 
this is important for us to understand that not because a person is a scientist or is a very intellectual person, that this person is not able to understand or accept certain things. Even as our friend Vanessa Anceloni, she's not here in the chat right now, but she is a scientist. She's a neuro uh, scientist and uh, she is one of the thousands of scientists that are more open-minded that they were able to discover certain things and they didn't stay stuck there because there are lots of scientists they say until here i can prove from here there i don't know and even um, what's the name of the the scientist that i love my goodness i have his picture with the tongue sticking out <laughs> forgot his name <laughs> he is the one that i also said uh science cannot prove but god must be able to so there is a, a moment that reached that uh, science can't prove yet yet when it will it will be allowed science will be able to prove it too whoops almost 10 so i have to finalize it here so the the last paragraph very important it talks it talks that uh, jesus means that uh, oops jesus means that no one is admitted into into it without simplicity to the kingdom of heaven no one can go to the kingdom of heaven without having simplicity of heart and humility of spirit so these are two very important attributes simplicity of heart and humility of spirit so we need to work on it we, we might not be scientists, but we might uh, know something and we are very proud of it, proud to a point that's not good. So we have to be careful. Are you proud of it in a point that you want to keep this just for yourself or are you are able to share with others and help others to understand and improve too? Be careful. And then he says, and the, the attributes that keep you away from god are pride among the vices that distance us from god so let's work on this let's diminish of uh, diminish our pride and uh, let's enhance our simplicity of heart and our humility that uh, sometimes is very difficult too but uh, we can all work on it little by little little by little we can humble ourselves to sometimes understand that uh, yes i might be saying the right thing but at this moment would be better for me to humble myself and accept another thing because it wouldn't cause like a fight for example, in a, in a very difficult family situation, sometimes when you want to prove your point, you are going to really open up a war and you don't want this. So sometimes it's better to silence for a while because we know the truth will always come. We will always come up. So don't worry about that. Time will tell everything. And uh, our time, our time finished. And I just would like to invite you to have our final prayer and then we can make little comments if anyone needs to say anything else, okay? Dear God, our mother and father, God, thank you so much for being here with us, inspiring us, helping us. At this moment that our study finished, we would like also to connect with all our friends around the world in this prayer for the benefit of all of us. Please, Master Jesus, we are all here, your brothers and sisters, the younger ones that still need so much to learn. And we are here asking your help, especially to improve our hope, improve our sense of positiveness, improve our desires of helping ourselves 
and then we can also help the others. And we ask also, Master Jesus, in the benefit of all the people from so many countries already affected by the coronavirus, especially Italy, who has been suffering a lot. Please, Master Jesus, send your angels, the enlightened spirits there, so we can help, help a lot of people, helping them to feel less pain. And if possible, Master Jesus, help all of us to benefit from it, to learn important lessons. And if a vaccine can be discovered, help it to be able to be done. Please stay with all of us now and always. Thank you so much. So be it. So my friends, I don't know if you know, but um, I invited a lot of people to connect for one brief minute at 10 p.m. so we can all pray together for the benefit of our planet, for our benefit, our families, because we believe that uh, when you're doing something good, is already wonderful. But if you can do something good with a lot of people together, it's even better, it's even stronger. So I know all over the world, a lot of people are praying in different times of the day. But if you can take one minute of your time at 10 p.m., it would be a blessing that we could all benefit this environment with positive energies, with good vibrations and good thoughts. So if uh, you want to ask any question, if you want to make any comments, if uh, you haven't done here, but if you would like to go later on to Miami Inner Light, I will be able to, to answer you. Thank you so much. And keep strong, keep your faith, and the things will get better soon. Continue with your hope because this is what moves the world and be positive. Thank you, everybody. Have a, a great night. Bye-bye. See you next Thursday.